Hello and good morning, South Bay. I am Leslie Robbins, your host at South Bay TV. It is so great to be with you again. Joining me is our guest from last week, energy awareness coach, Casey McCrossin, who has more to say on moving forward in life gracefully and positively. Welcome back, Casey. Thank you for having me. We'll have more on that later. But for right now, if you're just tuning in, we are South Bay TV. We are a live streaming platform reflecting the South Bay lifestyle, covering cities from El Segundo to San Pedro and all the towns in between. We're basically your local community online. We cover a variety of topics, including health and wellness, fashion and beauty, art, music, food, and entertainment, and with this new show, local news and events. So why don't we get to some local news and events? Congratulations are in order to Palos Verdes schools. Yes, they have been ranked the fifth best in the LA area. According to Nietzsche's 2022 rankings, Palos Verdes Peninsula Unified School District shined in categories like academics, teachers, diversity, college prep, health, and safety. Very, very important categories. Well, across town, Hermosa Beach School District is taking action against the current COVID surge and will now give students two COVID-19 rapid antigen home test kits. That is courtesy of the LA County Department of Health. Now, testing as well as mandatory mask wearing in and out of the classrooms while on school grounds will, of course, be enforced. Well, in response to the recent surge in cases of the Omicron variant, the YMCA is now offering free tests, yes, I said free, at 12 sites in LA, including San Pedro and the South Bay. People interested in getting a PCR test with results given 24 to 48 hours after should visit ymcala.org. The Venice Family Clinic is developing plans to expand its street medicine program in the South Bay. Now, the street medicine team helps provide health care to people without a home, and the organization offers clinical sites, works with medical providers, psychiatrists, and community partners. The main goal is to provide care, plus help get people safely housed and off the streets. Well, as of November, they have served 45,000 patients. That's a really good number. Okay, remember when that sewer pipe collapsed in Carson and spilled 8 million gallons of sewage into the ocean last month, which led officials to shut down beaches across LA and Orange counties over New Year's weekend? Well, the board allowed 30 days for public works employees to pull together a report on the Consolidated Sewer Maintenance District, which maintains 4,600 miles of mainland sewer within 37 cities and unincorporated areas. That report is expected to include information on planned infrastructure upgrades and repairs, long-term funding needs, and a plan to secure federal infrastructure funding to pay for needed work. Well, speaking of water, clean water, that is surfing in clean water, and the South Bay go hand in hand. So it is no surprise a nonprofit called Surfing Moms, originally started in Australia, has made it to the South Bay. Now, its mission is to provide caretakers with a chance to take care of themselves and enjoy the ocean. The idea is simple. You show up and catch a few waves while another mom watches your kid. Then you swap out, babysitting on the sand while that mom surfs. This all-inclusive organization welcomes moms of all backgrounds to come and join. Go to their website, surfingmoms.org. Well, the city of El Segundo recently selected its first ever poet laureate. Yes, her name is Hope Anita Smith. Hope is an award-winning poet, published writer, collage artist, and educator. She will serve in that role from this month until December 2023. 
Shifting gears to wildfire prevention, a very important topic. Southern California Edison plans to conduct aerial inspections over hard to reach areas in the Palos Verdes Peninsula over the next few weeks. The inspections aim to help prevent wildfires in the region and utilize drones and helicopters to see areas that might be hard to find while on the ground. Speaking of on the ground and maybe in the air, monarch butterflies may be coming to the South Bay. Yes, monarch caterpillars feed exclusively on the leaves of milkweed, the only host plant for this iconic butterfly species. Luckily, the presence of milkweed in Hermosa Beach means there may be an increase of these lovely creatures around. So everyone look up, off your phones, and look around. You might see some butterflies. The LA Galaxy and the city of Torrance announced a new partnership to keep the Torrance multi-use sports complex open to the community. This is great news. Under the new city lease, the state of California owned 6.2 acre complex will now be renamed LA Galaxy Sports Complex. A ribbon cutting ceremony is expected in April. Well, in food news, everyone's favorite, a new cafe just opened in Manhattan Beach. It is called Bluestone Lane, an Australian-inspired premium coffee roaster, works directly with sustainable coffee farms across Central and South America to find the best quality coffee beans. Enjoy their Aussie classics like an avo smash, breakfast bowl, or a flat white. Bluestone Lane is located at 321 Manhattan Beach Boulevard. I'll be there. I am a coffee drinker. A new restaurant is coming to El Segundo, sort of. Stellar Pizza is a spaceship on wheels, inspired by the creation and cooking of pizza via robot. Yes, you heard that right. Each Stellar Pizza truck creates and cooks a fresh, hot 12-inch pizza in about four and a half minutes from start to finish. And the cost, about seven or eight dollars each, depending on the toppings you get. And lastly, why do you love your community? The South Bay City's Council of Governments wants to see the best photographs from residents showcasing beauty in their communities. Submissions for the quote, Why I Love the South Bay photo contest are open now through February 28th. All photos submitted should be taken within the last three to five years so they represent the locations as they currently appear and be of places in these South Bay cities. Carson, El Segundo, Gardena, Hawthorne, Hermosa Beach, Inglewood, Lawndale, Lomita, Manhattan Beach, Palos Verdes Estates, Rancho, Palos Verdes, Redondo Beach, Rolling Hills, Rolling Hills Estates, and Torrance. Good luck to everybody. Okay, my guest this week, because every week we have a new guest, is a very special lady, Dr. Flora Sinha, a board certified internal medicine physician, and as you like to call yourself, a secondary infertility. IVF Warrior. That is a great title. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so we have a lot to talk about, just especially with all those titles, but let me just start with, you're a doctor, you are an internist, we are currently in the COVID pandemic. Yep. What are some things that you're seeing right now that are worrisome to you? I think the most worrisome thing for me is the rate of infection. As most of you guys all know um, the rate of Omicron infecting everybody is is never something that we've never seen before. Um, so that is quite worrisome. Thankfully, more people compared to last year are vaccinated. So that is decreasing the severity of illness. But still, our ERs, our urgent cares, our primary care doctors like myself, we are completely bombarded with patients who are uh, rightfully nervous. Well, are there things that kind of maybe are positive steps in the right direction right now? Let's maybe get off the negative, right? Yeah, yeah no, I think that's a great yeah. uh, mindset standpoint. Um, <laughs> vaccination rates are uh, increasing, and we do know data is showing that if you are up to date with your vaccines, meaning fully vaccinated plus boosted if eligible, that your symptoms are milder if you do get infected with COVID, especially um, the most recent variant, Omicron. And as a mom, what are patients who are parents saying? Because 
some kids who are younger still can get vaccinated, and our school's closing again, kids have to get tested, they don't, they have to wear masks. What are concerns of parents these days? It is a very confusing time for parents and for kids. Um, every school is going to be different. Every school, as most parents know, have their own guidelines. Um, I think the most important thing is, is to really do a risk assessment for your own family. Do you have any family members in your household that are high risk, meaning not vaccinated or have high risk medical conditions um, and risk stratify? So if you feel safe with your child's school and the way they are managing um, protocols, um, I think it's safe to continue to send your children to school. But again, I think that is a personal decision. I think we all need to do our due diligence if we have symptoms, keep our children home or keep ourselves home, get ourselves tested, continue to mask, continue to vaccinate and continue to distance sanitize and repeat because hopefully uh hopefully we'll see the end of this soon relative wait overall i think it's important to listen to data listen to your doctors to your physicians to all of your healthcare workers who are here to help protect you um and give you as many guidelines as possible as we know they're constantly changing as we continue to find out more about this virus so it's important to, to, to stay up to date and try to take precautions to help protect you and your family. I mean, I'm listening to you as a doctor, but you're also a woman and you're also a mom. How do you, if I can ask you a personal question, how do you not take all of this home with you and like separate yourself from being the doctor, but you're the mom and you're taking care of your family? How do you separate the two as a woman? Absolutely, that's a valid question. Um, it's something that I've had some practice with. Um, my significant other is also in healthcare, so we both have had a lot of practice really separating what we see out in the field and then coming home to our beautiful six-year-old daughter. Um, and also it's important to not always separating that because COVID is wherever we go, it's in her school and it's, it, it is integrated. So it's important to have conversations that are upfront and um, in a way that a six-year-old can understand but not scaring her to the point where she doesn't feel comfortable. And we're talking about the two like mindsets during the pandemic. You, as you are so open about, especially on social media, going through the pandemic, you were also going through IVF treatments and trying to build your family. And that in and of itself is a struggle. So not only are you a doctor dealing with your patients, you're a mom and your family, and now you're going through IVF. <laughs> How did you handle all of this? And I think a lot of women out there probably can maybe like relate to your story and will resonate with whatever you have to say on how you battled through it all at the same time. It was a lot. Um, this wasn't our first round. So thankfully we've had a little bit of practice. We learned from mistakes as far as how to approach IVF. So just a little background. I have secondary infertility, meaning I conceived my daughter without any problems. Um, and then when it came to wanting to grow my family, we couldn't. And after a workup um, with my doctor, I was diagnosed with infertility. So that was about three years ago. We had gone through multiple, obviously unsuccessful IVF rounds. We've gone through multiple losses and we had one embryo left. We took a break and then amid the pandemic, weirdly enough, things were slower on some end, meaning our social life definitely had slowed down. <laughs> and so we thought, you know what, this is our last chance. Let's just do it. Um, it is like a second job. I'm sure whoever have gone through infertility, going through IVF or any sort of medical fertility uh, workup is, is a whole other schedule. Um, so it was a lot, but I think, like I said, we've had a lot of practice of trying to separate the two and just, um, uh, really grounding ourselves in gratitude, especially after going or while we're going through the pandemic. We have our health, we have our family, we have our jobs, we have so much and really linking ourselves to gratitude helped us get through yet another IVF round. <laughs> and, and you're kind of led me into my next question, like tips and maybe tools to help other women get through not only the pandemic, fatigue as you're talking about, yeah. but going through personal battles at the same time, be it IVF yeah. or moving, loss of job, loss yeah. of family members, which is happening now, yeah. break up anything, you can handle that too. Absolutely. 
I think it's important to approach everything with the right mindset. So life is gonna throw us obstacles. That stuff doesn't change. I mean, it may not be to the level of a global pandemic, but um, Feels like it no, right? <laughs> but there are ups and downs to life. So really just building a good foundation. So making sure that you are having good mindset practices. So gratitude journaling is something that's really dear to my heart. It's something that allows me to acknowledge what I'm thankful for. Also self-reflection. So I do a self-check-in with myself, which is hard to do being someone that juggles a lot, but it really just takes five to 10 minutes. And once you get used to it, you start doing it naturally. And so really just asking yourself the question, something as simple as, how is my mind feeling today? Why? What can I do about it? How is my body feeling today? Why? What can I do about it? It just allows yourself to acknowledge your feelings. So when the world seems like it's crashing, you on have it on you, on your shoulders, and you're holding it up. Um, you have a good foundation to turn to. And then I always, 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 being a preventative care doctor, I always recommend to my patients keeping a good lifestyle. So good nutrition, a good exercise regimen. We manifest a lot of our mental load physically. So it's important to have a good baseline to make sure that, again, when the world is crashing down, that you have a good foundation to fall back on. On um, a personal note, I have women doctors, and you kind of are a testament to why. Because as women, you want someone to relate to what you're going through, and you are the embodiment of that. I appreciate that. Do you that. get that from your women patients? I do, actually. I, the, my predominant population of my own patients are women. Um, we connect a little bit better, but that has nothing to do with my male patients. I love you guys as well. And male doctors are great too. Absolutely. I work with some of the finest. Um, but absolutely. I mean, I think um, the female mindset is different. And I think we do need to approach every patient um, subjectively. I mean, everyone's a little bit different. Well, it has been a pleasure having you at this desk and speaking with you. Come back anytime. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, and take care of you and your family. I will. Thank you. And we will be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning South Bay. Energy awareness coach Casey McCrossin is back again this week. And Casey, I know you've had a lot more to add from last week about those New Year's resolutions and moving forward. Yes, I do. Thank you so much, guys, for having me back. I appreciate it. Yeah, so um, this year, what we really want to focus on with flipping our energy is just feeling the energy and feeling all of our emotions of what's going on with us. I know right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and it's there's a lot of you know mental health going on. And the doctor earlier had shared with us that she likes to do a self check in every day. I always love to share with my clients. What I love to do is just set a clock, find your favorite number pattern, whether it's 111, 222, 333, 444, whatever it might be. So just go ahead and save it in your phone and have it exactly what you wanna say. How am I feeling right now? Just do a check-in with yourself, just to see where your energy level is and how you can flip your energy in that exact moment. And so you take that, you know, maybe negative emotion, if you will, or maybe you're feeling sad or angry and you say, okay, what, what a can I do to flip my energy and to make me happy right now or to make me you know feel like I have more energy and get rid get through the afternoon what I do love to do as far as moving my body is I love to exercise because that will help you especially in the evening after work get out of your day and get the energy moving through your body you know and it'll really flip your energy by the end of the day for me personally too I love to dance so I just put on music and I just dance it out and it just moves the energy completely through my body so, fun tip. That's, That's a great, great tip. tip. And, and last week, you brought some, some cards, yes. kind of looking into the future a little bit, and I see you brought some new decks. I did. So, last week, we talked a lot about positive affirmations, speaking of positive and negativity. Um, so, I brought in Gabby Bernstein's um, Miracles Now cards, which are just great daily affirmation cards that you can pull for yourself. So, we'll go ahead. Ooh, I love how that pops out like that. Uh -oh. I am not the victim. I am the lighthouse. So there you go. We're just gonna pull a couple of cards and see where this takes us. Okay. Alrighty. Another one sticking out here. Relationships are assignments for optimal growth and healing. Aren't they always? Yes. Mm. All right, let's see. Let's get a couple more here. I like to get a couple of cards just to kind of give an overall idea of your day. Ooh, that one's oh. good. My presence is my power. 
There you go. And I'm actually wearing yellow, which represents the solar plexus chakra, which is all about standing in your power and standing in your strength and confidence. Wait, what does red mean? The red color is root chakra. So root chakra is the first chakra, and it's all about stability, feeling safe, feeling secure and rooted, and being present in the moment. Nice. Yes, yes, exactly. So we're, we are re rooted, present in the moment, and standing in our confidence. I today. love this. I love yes. this. Yes. Yes. Now, where's my coffee from, from uh, the new cafe? cafe. Exactly. Yeah. And then <laughs> there you go. Happiness is a choice that I make. We just made a choice to be happy today. How about that? There you go. Exactly. We flipped our energy. So we'll go ahead now. Um, I do want to pull some animal cards, and this is what I have what here. These are just animals that um, represent you know the energy that's going around us right now so if you see any of these animals around maybe town or just dolphins sometimes come up you see the dolphins they have a significant cannot talk a significant meaning so we'll go ahead and we'll pick a couple of animal cards to see what's going on oh the canary spirit sing your own song mm -hmm. so there we go again just standing in your own strength and your own power and just be you why not right? who else are you gonna be Exactly. Right. exactly. Everyone's taken. Absolutely. You got to be yourself. I didn't make that line up, but I still have them somewhere. Yeah. You have to be yourself. All right. Let's see what else we have here. What other animals? Hmm. Ooh, that oh, there's was, a sticker. That was like, didn't want to come out. Oh, let's see. There we go. All righty. The chameleon spirit. Act as if. Hmm. Explain that one. So, I mean, just for me personally, just. I mean, as we're standing in our own strength and our own power, it's telling us to kind of have a little bit more of a chameleon attitude, I guess, just to not necessarily fit in. But I feel like for me personally, act as if you, you own it. Act as if you are the one who is, you know, the person. Oh, okay, I'm like I'm losing my train of thought. Um, what do I want to say with that? I'll do it again. Um, act as if almost means fake it till you make it almost. I guess so. I mean, act as if, yeah. I mean, you own it. Just act own as if it. you already have the job, and then you're going to get the job. Absolutely, act as if yep. You already you're doing this, and then you'll have the confidence, the power to go get it. Yes, dress for success. They always say, right? And I can tell you. I mean, for me, I was in, you know, always wearing dresses and got dressed up for work all all the time. And then now I was wearing workout clothes every single day, and that really can affect you, you know, your mental health because speaking of COVID, absolutely, you're like, oh my god, like I actually need to put on clothes, put on makeup, wash my hair, blow dry my hair, like look presentable for my day, and it really does flip your energy when you dress for success. So there you go. Let's pull one more card. One more card. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what's coming on. Because I have to feel it too. It's got to okay. feel it. They're sticking out. There you go. There's like a bunch of them sticking out. So oh, usually when there's one. too many. Yeah. Oh, see, like okay. there's too many in that. You need one. To I like kind of one to kind of like really voice. tell it. Oh, there yeah. we go. All right. The wombat spirit. Be at home. But, but not, not your sweats. sweats. Not your sweats. <laughs> Dress for success at home. It doesn't matter where you are. Just make sure you look cute while doing it. I think being at home maybe means be centered, have your foundation wherever you go maybe. Absolutely. And I think right now, um, you know, we are with COVID kind of going on. It's right now is a good time to just be at home within yourself too. And one of the things I felt like what I learned through COVID was really taking that alone time you know, going deep within and, and understanding again who you truly are. And it really does speak to all of these cards that we pulled out for the animals. You know, just being you, just be the true you. And that's the only thing that's going to be, give you the, you know, the confidence that you need at the end of the day. Well, more great words of wisdom. Thank you so much again for being Thank you for here. having me. I appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you. And what's coming up this weekend in the South Bay is coming up on Saturday, January 15th from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Take a two and a half hour nature cruise whale watching tour. Location is 140 International Boardwalk, Redondo Beach. The number is 310-372-2111. Join them aboard the Navigante, located in one of the richest habitats in Southern California. Their two and a half hour trip offers a chance to see a wealth of marine life, including some of the largest animals on the planet. Staying on Saturday, January 15th, the WTFB band from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. will be playing at the Lighthouse Cafe. 
2 p.m. is the start time and plan to arrive early so you don't miss anything. As always, it's a completely different show than the last one, and they have a bunch of incredible new tunes to bust out alongside your longtime favorites. From composed majestic prog rock to improvisational jam band gems, WTFB plays dream set lists that you simply won't hear played by any other band. Staying on Saturday, January 15th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. is Deja Vu at the Albus Showroom in San Pedro. Deja Vu is the most accurate and heartfelt recreation of the Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young experience, brought to life by a group of highly dedicated and experienced L.A. area musicians, Ray Ray, Steven, Jim, and Devitt. They not only perform the legendary music of CSNY, they take their audience on a magical musical trip through classic rock history. You'll hear songs like Teach Your Children, Southern Cross, Deja Vu, Wooden Ships, Sweet Judy, Blue Eyes, Southern Man, and many, many more that you've come to know and love over the years. Rest assured that Deja Vu will please the most ardent of CSNNY fans. Also on Saturday, you have the train rides in Torrance going on from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. That's located at Wilson Park, of course, in Torrance. Southern California Live Steamers provides mini train rides on public run days every first Sunday of the month from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and every third Saturday of the month from noon to 3 p.m. All SCLS members are City of Torrance volunteers with annual fingerprint clearance and are not paid for their time expended on maintaining the trains and facility and providing the rides. Donations are appreciated. Moving on to Sunday, January 16th, we have the 15th annual Southern California Slack Key Festival. It's going on from 2 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. It's located at the Redondo Beach Performing Arts Center. That's in Redondo Beach. Now, since 2008, the Southern California Slack Key Festival has been the biggest Hawaiian music concert event in the mainland U.S and features the most respected names in Hawaiian guitar music and hula today. Taking its name from a finger-picking style of guitar playing indigenous to Hawaii, as heard on the Grammy-nominated soundtrack for The Descendants, the Slack Key Festival brings the art of Kihoalu guitar to Redondo Beach. Staying on January 16th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., we have the Manhattan Beach Smartphone Photo Walk. The location is the Manhattan Beach Pier, of course, in Manhattan Beach. Join former USA Today columnist and photographer Jefferson Graham at the Manhattan Beach Pier on Sunday at 4 p.m. Bring your smartphone or, if you prefer, camera for a social meetup to take memorable photos of the beach and pick up some tips on how to get better smartphone photos. All are welcome whether you're just starting out with your smartphone camera, bought a new camera and barely know how to use it, or are advanced. This is an outing with people who love taking photos. Staying on Sunday, January 16th, we have Crazy Fish Cars and Coffee going on 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. The location is Crazy Fish in San Pedro. Hot rods, classics, and antiques are mixed in with newer sports cars. Crazy Fish serves breakfast burritos, and it's in a strip mall with a grocery store and Starbucks. So all the ingredients are there for a great Sunday morning car meet. There are around 30-ish cars there, and it's very informal, but everyone is friendly and chatty, just like your typical CNC. As I mentioned, this one is in the South Bay, and it's up on the hill. San Pedro is the address, but it's on the edge of Rancho Palos Verdes. And then we have Monday, January 17th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. There is a MLK Jr. Day of Service happening 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the White Point Nature Preserve in San Pedro. Celebrate MLK Jr. Day by giving back. You will help care for the White Point Native Plant Demonstration Garden by planting native shrubs, removing invasive weeds, watering native plants, and more. Your efforts will help restore this habitat for wildlife as well as create a beautiful place for the community to enjoy. 
Okay, as we wrap things up here, let me remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our online newsletter to be notified of any new stories and when we go live. Follow us on social, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, so you can be up to date with all the latest information and happenings around town. Also on our website, check out our local happenings page to get more information on all the events I just told you about. And if you have a local story or event that you would like to tell us about, please do so on our website. Fill out the form on the homepage, and once you submit it, someone from our team will be in touch because it's all about community and engagement, and that cannot happen without you. So take care of you, your town, and each other. Thanks for watching.